grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside, and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I don't think anyone alive enjoys job performance reviews, except for maybe a few HR people. Even if you're doing a great job, job reviews and evaluations can often make us feel stressed. On this Labor Day weekend, I want to share with you some quotes from some actual job performance reviews. Here we go. I wouldn't allow this employee to reproduce. He must have gotten into the gene pool when the lifeguard wasn't looking. This associate is really not so much of a has-been, but a won't-be. Works well under constant supervision and cornered like a rat in a trap. This young lady has delusions of adequacy. Sets low personal standards and consistently fails to achieve them. This employee is depriving a village somewhere of an idiot. Gates are open, lights are flashing, but the train isn't coming. If you stand close enough to him, you can hear the ocean. And finally, some drink from the fountain of knowledge, he only gargle. Jeez, with quotes like that, I'm glad we're saved by grace rather than by our own works. And yet, labor and work are important aspects of life. First of all, work is a gift. It's a gift from God. Remember, work wasn't assigned to Adam as punishment for sin. Human beings were already working before sin came into the world. In Genesis 2.15, we are told that God placed Adam into the Garden of Eden to till and to keep it. It wasn't until Adam and Eve had sinned that work became a burden. Thorn and thistles began to hinder Adam's farming, and work began to require sweat and toil. But work itself was not punishment for sin. Work is a positive good. Why, presumably, even the angels in heaven, like Gabriel, have work to do. Once there was a man who died, and when he regained consciousness, he found himself in the next world. He looked around and saw this vast expanse of beautiful land. And as he took it all in and rested, he then began to wonder what else was there. And so he called out and said, hello, is anyone there? And an attendant in white showed up with a tray. What is it you want? The attendant asked. Well, said the man, what can I have? Anything you want, said the attendant. So the man ordered up his favorite foods, and they appeared on the tray, and they were delicious. Next, the man called for some games, and they appeared on command, and he had fun. Out on the golf course, he never sliced, and all of his shots were just fantastic. Next, he called for some of the great books that he hadn't had a chance to read in life. And so he read, he napped, he napped, he read. But over time, he got bored. One day, he cried out, I want something to do. That's when the attendant appeared and said, I'm sorry, but that's the one thing I can't give you. The man was frantic, and in frustration, he cried out, I'm miserable with nothing to do. I'd rather be in hell. And that's when the attendant said, Sir, I thought you knew that that is where you are. Work is a gift from God that can bring meaning and purpose 
and self-worth into our lives. We often think that it's only through worship and prayer that we can glorify God. But we can worship God beyond just worship and prayer, including our work and our servanthood. Those are other ways that we can serve and worship God. And that is something we sometimes forget. And it doesn't matter whether you are slinging hash or whether you are coming up with creative ideas to increase corporate profits. It doesn't matter whether you're building a house or whether you're building the future by teaching in our schools. It doesn't matter whether you're moving dirt with heavy equipment or whether you're removing dirt as you bathe one of the patients in your care. It doesn't matter whether you're serving tables or whether you're waiting for the anesthesia to kick in in order to begin the operation. It doesn't matter whether you're pumping gas, pumping iron, or pumping oil. If it's a good day's work, if it's a, a worthy job, then any job can glorify God. Every job under heaven can glorify God if it's done with the right attitude and the right heart. Why, that's true whether we're talking about a paid job or a volunteer position. Even when you retire, there's still work to be done in our church, in our community, and in our world. And one of the ways that we can serve and celebrate God's grace is through work and through our labor. But here's something else. We can see God through the work of others. Specifically, in our scripture reading from James, we are told that that work includes caring for the orphans and the widows in their times of distress. In other words, we can experience God as others minister to us. Once there was a teacher's aide who taught in a Christian school, and the day before she and her family experienced a great tragedy. The mother and her two sons had come home from school to find that all seven of their precious goats were dead. They had been killed by the neighbor's two German shepherds. The next day at school, as you might imagine, the woman was feeling low and depressed. That morning, one of the little girls in her kindergarten class kept coming up to her and hugging her and kissing her and telling her how much she loved her. Frankly, the teacher was, felt a little smothered and even somewhat annoyed, but she kept her emotions in check. And she just thanked the little girl every time. Later, at lunchtime, the woman began to feel as if she was feeling much better. And then she had an epiphany, and she realized it was through this little girl's love that God was reaching out to her, comforting her, and lifting her burden. That through this little girl, God was hugging her, and God was touching her heart. We can experience God through the work of others, including our own children. And... To that, we also need to remember that every person who in their work serves and cares for us is a child of God created in the image of God. But here's something else. Others can see and experience God in and through our work. I think that's what James was trying to tell us when he said we are, are to be doers of the word and not just simply hearers of the word. In other words, that is through our work, it's through us being the salt of the earth, the, the light of the world, as Jesus called us, that others can experience God. When we see our work as a gift of God, then we can view our labor and our jobs 
as part of God's ministry to the world. We begin to see ourselves as fellow workers in God's vineyard. We begin to see ourselves as partners with God in Christ. We begin to see ourselves as missionary servants of God. Some of us are old enough to remember video stores like Blockbuster, where you went to rent, at first, VHS tapes and later DVDs. Incidentally, the last Blockbuster in the entire world is found in Bend, Oregon, and it's still going. Jeanette Coy tells about a time when she worked at a video store. About an hour before the store closed, a young woman came in to rent a movie. Jeanette saw her come in and felt compelled to check on her. She walked down one of the aisles and found the woman crying. And Jeanette asked her if she could help. And the woman said, I want a bad movie. And Jeanette said, I don't think that's what you need. I think you need a hug. And she gave her a hug. And then she led her to the family section. And Jeanette said, I don't, I don't know what movie we picked out, but we did pick one out. And the woman left. A few days later, the woman returned to the store and, and she saw Jeanette and she rushed up and she grabbed her and she said, do you remember me? Yes, Jeanette said. She said, you saved my life the other night. I had lost a baby and I was thinking about ending my life. Imagine a kind word of compassion, a simple hug, a different movie all worked to save that young woman's life. That night, Jeanette was a doer of the word. She was the light of the world. She was the salt of the earth as she brought that young woman back from the precipice. That night, that woman experienced God through kindness and through a hug. We are called to be doers of the word. And we are called to allow others to experience God through our work and our labor of love. I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you if you can find like a, a towel or something when we're done here today. I'm going to hand them out at church on Sunday, but this is just a shop cloth, shop towel, whatever you want to call it. You can use it to wipe the sweat off your forehead. You can use it to dry dishes or to wash a car or even to dust off that Bible maybe you haven't opened in a while. You can put it over your shoulder or your arm like a waiter or you can wrap it around your belt like a short order cook. You can look at it and be reminded of the Lord's Supper and the foot washing that preceded it. Foot washing is not the necessity it was back in Jesus' day and yet the towel and the basin are still reminders of servanthood. And as doers of the word, we are called to be servants of God. I mean, what else does it mean to be a doer of the word if it's not to help others through our labor experience God and the love of Christ? So here's what I want to ask you to do this week. I want to ask you if you can find a towel. I want to ask you to place it somewhere that you'll see it every day, maybe in your car, maybe in your bathroom as you're getting ready in the morning, or maybe in your kitchen or by your TV, wherever you look every day. And when you see it this week, I want you to remember that you're called to be a doer of the word, a servant of God, called to be a blessing to others, and called to take advantage of those opportunities where we can glorify God at the same.